Father, we want to bless your holy name once again this day. We appreciate your mercy and love over our life. We appreciate your goodness, your kindness that are new every morning. Once again, you have awakened us to see the light of another day. We rejoice in your love. We present our lives to you this morning once again as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, for it is our reasonable service. We declare this morning that we are not conformed to the ways of this world, but rather we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. This morning we bind our minds and our faculties, O oh God, unto you. Every aspect of our life that defines our decisions, that defines our choice, every aspect of our life, O oh God, that controls, that regulates how we see, how we respond, how we view, how we perceive, how we decide, we lay them on your altar this morning. We ask, O oh God, that once again, that as your word comes into our lives, into our space, that we are indeed sanctified, washed, that nothing of our life this morning, yes, will be defined by the rebellion of the fallen nature. We yield our minds, we yield our body, we yield our members to you this morning. We pray, Jesus, that truly our body, which represents our faculties of decision, will be regulated by the authority of your kingdom this morning. We yield every aspect of our life to you that indeed our life will be administrated by the authority of your heart, of your mind, and of your will. That the flesh will not have rule over us. That the ideas of men will not have control over us. That the opinions of men, the opinions of this world, O oh God, will not control and influence our decision for you. We declare this morning that our life, O oh God, has become indeed an offering, bringing glory and praises to you. Take your place this morning. May we become indeed a through representatives, O oh God, of your kingdom. May the gospel of your kingdom become what drives our movement, our actions, decision. May we be motivated, O oh God, by heavenly things, the things of your spirit this morning. I declare in the name of Jesus that, O oh God, the words that will proceed out of my mouth are words that are proceeding from your heart. That no words of my own idea or opinion this morning will come out. I lay aside this morning every agenda every preference, every desire, every longing, every will or motivation that is not of you, I lay them aside. I declare Christ, come, rule, reign, take your place. Express yourself through me this morning. May your kingdom once again be manifest through my life. May your spirit flow through me like a river, O oh God. Oh God, this morning I have exalted your word even, yes, beyond my daily food. I have exalted your word, oh God, above any other thing. <clears throat> your word is all I see because it's all I need. In the beginning, you created the world through your word. And your sister sustaining this world through your word. Nothing else can be more powerful than your word. Everything that you are and that you're doing are sustained by the authority of your word. Our giftings, our abilities, our competence, our skill, our ministry and offices are all subject to the authority of your word. This morning I declare that I surrender myself to the ministry of your word. Your word is life. Your word is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. 
Your word can discern, yes, the very intentions and the intents of the hearts of men. So may your word this morning become the ministry that I see. That my prophetic call and grace, oh God, this morning will function within the ambience of your word. Oh God, let the revelation of Christ this morning once again be imprinted as we interact with that which is written. May the revelation of Christ be established upon every heart, every soul, every mind. May your kingdom take precedent above our own preference. May your kingdom this morning rule and reign over our motivation. May we go this morning because your word has asked us to go. I thank you that as we continue to look into the very foundation, the framework of what you define to be the ecclesia, Lord, that we will continue to discover and uncover ancient paths as we seek to journey back towards the place of divine representation. I pray this morning, O God, that as we look at Paul and Barnabas at Economy, O God, that our life, O God, yes, will express the same very revelation, the same very power that this man carried. I thank you this morning. Thank you, O God. Thank you. Thank you that the same grace you placed upon the apostles, the same grace, O God, that you established in the life of Paul and Barnabas, that they were able to carry out their ministry without reservation, without hindrance, without any holes back, oh God, that we will, in this 21st century, be able to also carry out a mandate. I thank you this morning. I plant my feet, oh God, upon the very, yes, footpath that you walk, my Lord. I, my eyes this morning are on you. It's my desire to behold, to see, yes, your goodness, your light, your righteousness, yes, let it become the very expression, the very cloak that I wear. I thank you this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to you, Lamb of God. Praise to you, Lamb of God. Have your way once again. Thank you for the authority of your word. Thank you, Father, for the authority of your word. We speak these words in righteousness. Thank you this morning once again. That my life, oh God, yes, is found established in the life, in the authority of your word. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not a stroke of your word will go unfulfilled. Thank you, Lord, that you watch over your word, yes, to perform. I bless you this morning, yes, that we can find your ways, your thoughts, your desire, your intention, your objective, your agenda. In that which has been written. It is written, Jesus said. He overcame, yes, by the written word. He overcame by that which is written. This morning we stand by that which is written. Yes, the living word written upon the tablets of our hearts. I thank you that your word is not Old Testament. Your word is not New Testament. Your word, yes, is your desire spoken Ah, Father, this morning, I connect to that word. And I declare in the name of Jesus. That word will bring healing. That word will bring deliverance. That word will bring restoration. That word will inject faith, hope. That word will inject, yes, a new sense of your love within the heart of your ecclesia. We will become men and women ready and prepared to represent you. Even in this new day. Thank you that we are the church of the new day. We are the third day church. A church that you are, you are bringing out, yes, of darkness. A church you have brought out, yes, of the valley of dry bones. A church you are breathing upon again. A church that you are empowering, yes, with your grace and goodness and life. A church that you are administrating. Ah, thank you. Thank you this morning. That indeed, we are that church. We are that church driven by your spirit. Moved by your spirit. Propelled by your spirit. 
enriched by your spirit, endowed by your spirit. A church, yes, that walks in the reality of your presence, Holy Spirit. I thank you this morning. Breathe on us once again. Let this word be words that will confirm your ways, that will affirm your truth. Let this word be, yes, that which once again will keep us in that part where we are persuaded, not shaken, not be moved, yes, by the lies of men. Lord, thank you that through this word we have been established upon the doctrines of Christ. Thank you, Spirit of God, that our life is aligning, yes, to that part and order of life that cannot be shaken or moved. That we are no longer like a reed, that we are no longer like a leaf, oh God, that is tossed through and fro. No, Father, that we have stability in the revelation of Christ our Lord, who is ascended, yes, to your right hand, seated, watching, yes, until all his enemy be made his footstool. We thank you this morning. We declare, let the light of this word continue to rise and shine in our hearts, even unto that perfect day, the day of the Lord. The word says the day of the Lord will make all things bare. Every hidden things will be made bare. The day will make all things bare, will reveal all things. This is your day, the day of your light, the day of your glory, the day of the rising of the Son of Man upon the hearts of men. I thank you. Oh, Father, may your will once again this morning lead us further as we get persuaded not to be shaken, oh God, yes, by the challenges of our day, by the traumas and the crises of our time. May we rise up, oh God, and become a people established upon, yes, Lord, the house of your rock. Christ be establishing us even as you establish us as the mountain of your Lord, of your house. I thank you this morning. Honor and glory to you. Thank you, Lord, for the restoration of yourself into our space, into our life. That we are governed, we are governed by the authority of your kingdom. That we are not moved, that we are not shaken. I bless your name this morning. Oh, may the church say amen. May everyone who loves his appearance this morning say amen. May his truth continue to lead us to the place of amen. Yes, let it be so in our lives. We bless you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Well, if you're joining me this morning, once again, I want to welcome you to another session, to another you know, opportunity to press further into the heart of God, into the mind of God. Yes, we are pressing in. We are journeying into all of the things that heaven has ordained for us. The Bible says he has kept the best wine for last. And that is something we must rejoice over. That is a word we need to rejoice over. That no matter how terrible, how difficult, how challenging the crises are, amen, that we know that we have been preserved, we have been kept, amen, for last. That there's something that heaven has prepared for us that will make us to continue to shine the light. So we need to just continue to focus our eyes and our attention on the living word. The, the more we look into the word, the more we gain perspective, the more we have, amen, understanding, the more we have the right, amen, posture of how to engage the crisis of our day, no matter how complex, no matter how difficult, no matter how challenging they may look like. I mean, when you look, what is, look at what is going on in the world, you may ask yourself, do we have a hope? Do we have, amen, a chance to make a difference of course because we are not doing these things by our own might amen that's why we need to constantly amen remind ourselves amen of who we are and what the lord is doing in our day this is one of the reasons why we need to be prophetic amen in our view in our outlook amen being prophetic means that we are able to see and understand amen what the lord is doing within the seasons of man hallelujah within the crisis of of of, of our day and of our time the lord is moving the lord is building his church and as, as, as long as we continue to, amen, develop the, the, the seen eyes, as long as we continue to keep our minds and our heart, amen, aligned with that which God, amen, is doing, the more our faith rises, the more hope, amen, is steered in our heart and the more love, amen, grows in us. Remember, the love is a person. The Bible says, this three shall abide, amen. 
hope, faith, love. Amen. Yes. So, friends, this morning, I want to welcome you again as we continue to adjust our perspective, as we continue to adjust, amen, our understanding, as we continue to live our life within the atmosphere, amen, of the prophetic mandate of God for this season in time. The Lord is building his church. As his building is planting, hallelujah, the seed of righteousness, within the heart, within the soil of those, amen, who have presented themselves to him as a good ground. Yes, may every weed be removed from our heart this morning. May everything that God has not planted, amen. Jesus said, the tree that my father has not planted shall be uprooted. I believe they have been uprooted as, as we daily engage, amen, the process, the pruning of God's word. As we continue, amen, to, to, to look into the perfect law of liberty, every aspect of our life that is not ordained, that is not aligning, amen, to the will of God will be dealt with. Yes, that is the beauty of, of God's word. The Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God is dividing asunder. The word of God is separating that to which, amen, defines the spirit from that which, amen, our soul life, amen, has imbibed but does not glorify God. This is one of the reasons why we have to constantly, amen, engage the word of God to keep our heart aligned. God says, I found a man, amen. He found a man in David whose heart is after him. May that be our prayer. May we be a people, a generation that constantly, continually pursue the Lord so that the will of God, amen, can, can be done in our life and can prosper through our hands. I believe God for great things this morning. We will continue to look into, amen, the scripture and the Lord has been speaking to us as we continue to deal with the concept, amen, of the return of the apostolic spirit. Friends, I cannot overemphasize, amen, the need for this spirit to be manifest within the, 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 the heart and the community of the ecclesia. We will not be able to do anything meaningfully in our day if we don't, amen, return and imbibe the values and the principle, amen, of a true and a sound doctrinal apostolic community. We will not be able to function. And even indeed we begin to function, we might find ourselves being deceived and being lured into all kinds of, you know, uh, uh, ideas and, and philosophy as we see today. So it's time that we turn our heart back, amen, to the divine part, to the ancient part, amen, to the divine order, to the divine, you know, pattern, to the divine blueprint that has been given to us. Thank God that this, 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 you know, this experiences, this engagement, amen, we are all written down. The word of God, the Bible, amen, allow us to be able to see how to, how to build and how to remain, how to maintain, amen, that which we have built constantly because it's not enough to build. We also need to maintain, amen, that which you have, you have, we, we, you know, we have built just like any house. When you build a house, amen, you must also, amen, make room, amen, for maintenance because you have the issue of wear and tear. You have all kinds of things happening, amen. So you have to also develop an attitude of maintaining. Many a times people start started well they built well amen but the attitude the administration of the spirit that ought to guide them in maintaining that which they have built amen was not there and therefore things start cracking and things start falling apart we don't want to make that make that mistake in our day as the lord continue to return to us and as he continue to engage our heart we have to remain he says if you abide in me and my words abide in you we have to we have to keep ourselves we have to log in we have to maintain the path where we are daily being maintained amen in the administration of the spirit yes we have to keep ourselves amen log in the place of prayer not just any kind of prayer but the prayer that will keep us that will keep our path, that will keep our minds, amen, that will keep our focus, our attention, that will, a prayer that will keep our faith alive in Christ, a prayer that will keep our eyes on the finish, yes. 
We have to daily purge ourselves from every, you know, idea and, and desire, every will, every motive, amen, every agenda, amen, the pressures of this world that sometimes comes to choke the world. We have to keep ourselves away from those things. We have to daily undress ourselves, amen, from the ways of this world, from the uh, environment that wants to snuff our life, that want to edge us in, that want to compel us, amen, to, you know, to, to eat the bread of Babylon and to to wear the apparel, amen, and to be, you know, you know, to be renamed by, you know, by the identity of, of Babylon. No, we have to daily remind ourselves when you live in a, in a field, amen, like Babylon or Egypt, you have to daily remind yourself, amen, of who you are. Your window must constantly be open and be turned towards Jerusalem praying, amen, to the true God, amen. You have to daily, amen, live life in the opposite order of the environment that you live in or else you'll be stuck you know, snuffed in, you are, you'll be sucked into that, you know, lifestyle. Before you know it, you forget who you are. A company of priests that found themselves in Babylon, amen, began to, you know, uh, uh, intermingle with the Babylonians until, amen, their identity was totally, you know, uh, 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 compromised. Their mission was compromised. That even in Babylon, we still remain priests. Amen. Even in Egypt, we know that, amen, we're Israelites. Amen. We are the Israelites of God. Amen. That no place we find ourselves, no environment we find ourselves, at the workplace, amen, at school, wherever we find ourselves, that we remember, we remind ourselves of who we are. Your identity is your driving force in maintaining your mission and your mandate on earth. There's a world that wants to, you know, reculture you. That is, in fact, reculturing everything. We have to daily remind ourselves. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm the light of the world. Christ in me, the hope of glory. No matter the glory a man, you know, wave before me or the society wave before me, there's a greater glory. You have to daily remind yourself of who you are, what you are, who, what you represent. It is that reminder, that attitude of, you know, remembrance that continually stay your heart. And that is what allow, amen, the life of God to continually grow in you. Such that when you need to administrate the power of God, amen, it flows. There's a river in us whose streams makes glad the city of God. God's in the, God, is, God is in the midst of our friends. I want to remind you of another scripture that we've been tracking for a while now. In fact, we began, I think, uh, uh, this year with, with this scripture. But I just felt this morning as we continue to engage, amen, the concept of the restoration of the apostolic spirit through an apostolic company. There's no, amen, apostles. There are no apostolic initiative without, amen, the apostolic spirit. God has poured himself. He said in the book of John, the last I pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Yes, the outpouring of the spirit, amen. It's not just for us, all right, to reflect certain idea or, you know, exercise. No, it's for us to represent, amen, his, his redemptive intention. It's for us to be empowered. It's for us, amen, to be endowed in order to bring forth, to finish, amen. Yes, his intentions in the earth. There's a church that is seeking to bring to pass God's intention for their generation. And for our generation, amen, the outpouring of the Spirit of God, which is apostolic, amen, by design, what does that mean? We've explained that several times. It means to precisely represent, amen, God's counsel, God's purpose. I like to use the word God's redemptive purpose. Because, amen, everything that God is doing right now is to bring everything back to the divine order is to bring everything back to the dimension of Genesis, the point of the beginning. Amen. Beginning does not just mean about starting. No, it means the right order. It means, amen, the divine order, the divine, you know, uh, uh, objective of God from the beginning. There's a, there's, a, there's a plan. There's a reason why God created the earth. There's a reason why God created man. There's a reason, amen, why God created women. There's a reason why God made us, amen, yes, uh, uh, to, you know, to multiply, you know. There's a reason for everything that God has done, amen. And that reason has been, has been attacked, has been, 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 been maligned, amen, as, as continually faced, amen, you know, resistance, that reason, that purpose, yes, everything that God created, amen, has been attacked by the enemy. 
And to, to, to today, the enemy is using amen, all kinds of humanistic idea, philosophy, system, and demonic power, amen, to seek to alter, just like he did, you know, try to alter, amen, God's plan and purpose for, for Eve and for Adam in the garden. Yes, the enemy is always fighting God's divine agenda. He said to the woman, yes, God knows that the day you eat of this tree, of this fruit, you will be like him. You see, everything that he does, amen, is to seek that we, we go against, we challenge, amen, we frustrate, we move on the other side of God's divine intention. But the apostolic grace and ministry, the ecclesia that Jesus said is building, amen, are designed to bring things back. Through, of course, the grace of God, through the strength of God. That's why God poured himself. So that, amen, we have the resource, we have the ability, we have, amen, the power. We have the capacity and the capability, the skill, if you will, amen, to turn things back to the right order. Yes. We refuse to have a people, a home, a family, a generation, amen, that is walking in the opposite direction of God's counsel. We want to bring everything back. Jesus Christ came. His death on the cross was to restore man back, hallelujah, to God's divine order. And our spirit indeed has been restored. But it's not enough for the spirit to be restored. Our soul and everything that defines, amen, who we are as human must be restored back to God. And this is why we are doing what we're doing. This is the essence, the reason for the church, amen, yes. To go into the world. This is the purpose of the gospel. Amen. The purpose of the gospel is for people to be awakened and see. Oh my word. I'm in the wrong place. I'm doing the wrong thing. I've imbibed the wrong value. And turn. But not just turn. Amen. But turn to the right path. Turn to God. Jesus said, I am the way. The gospel is to turn people back to the way. Back to the truth. We live in a world today that doesn't want Christ as a way, that doesn't want the truth. In fact, everything that defines truth in terms of its morality, amen, in terms of its values and principles are being rejected openly. Systems and, and governments and, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, uh, nations that, that ought to help people, you know, return to the right path, amen, are the ones, in fact, promulgating values and, and, and policies, amen, that, 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 that keeps people in the path that will lead them to destruction. They're doing it to our children. They're doing it in schools. They're doing it with, you know, with human lives. Many of the policies that we have seen, either in the area of economy, finance, all right, yes, raising a home, all right, you know, you trying to achieve something in life, are all, amen, against the values and the principle of man. And we have to have that understanding. This is the essence, this is the reason why, amen, we preach the gospel. Because we know, amen, that at the end, when the judgment of God comes, it's going to be, it's going to be brutal. So we have to continually sound the alarm. We have to continually, amen, you know, find ourselves, locate ourselves on that mountaintop and declaring for everyone to hear and say, hey, we're going the wrong path. And there's a judgment coming because there's a God who created man. Man did not create himself. So he cannot be, amen, the final amen, uh, 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 authority to himself. No. Everything is subject to the authority of God. So the gospel is good news. It's good news. And we have to daily preach it with our life, with our voice, with our mind, with our resource, with our money. Everything God has given to us must preach the gospel. I was saying yesterday that everything we do must be done within the context, amen, of preaching, of preaching the gospel. You're running, amen, uh, an initiative. You, you must have, amen, that, that arrowhead where the gospel, amen, can, you know, can be launched through. Whatever you're doing, you're raising your children, you must let them know at the end of the day that their life, amen, is designed to bring glory and praise and honor to God. They must preach the gospel. No matter how skillful, how empowered they are, how resourceful they are, you tell them it's because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everything God has given to us, the wife, the husband, amen, the children, the business, you're su succeeding in, in whatever career you are. Listen, it's for the gospel. 
The gospel is to return man back, amen, to the right order. And it's from there they can truly have joy, peace, tranquility. The Bible says the kingdom of God, amen, which is the habit of the gospel, amen. The Bible says the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. These are things that man cannot buy. These are things that man, amen, are searching for, but are searching for these things in the wrong place. We have to let them know. We have to let them understand. We have to show them. And sometimes showing them means that you have to put your life on the line. Because people don't want to listen. They, want, they don't want to hear. You see, it is the love of God that compels us. When we preach, when we reflect, when we stand for truth, we must understand that, amen, the motivation is love. For God so loved the world that he gave the reason why we give, the reason why we do what we do, the reason why we go is because, amen, we love God who loves the world. And if he loves the world, we have to love the world. The world, amen, it's not, it's not the structure, it's not the, it's not the building, it's the people. Hallelujah. That's why I keep saying, if we can engage with the heart of people, it's easy to transform our environment. But if we continue to invest in the transformation of an environment and the heart of people remains evil, remains callous, remains wicked, remains dangerous, amen. Listen, with their own very hand, they will destroy the things that we have built. We are seeing it daily. Only the gospel can change and reconfigure the hearts of men. I said I was going to read the scripture. Let me quickly read the scripture. Hebrews chapter 12 verse. I'm going to take you from verse uh, 18. It says you have not come to a mountain that can be touched. And that is burning with fire. To darkness, to gloom, to storm. To a trumpet, a trumpet blast. Or to such a voice speaking words. That those who heard it begged that no further words be spoken to them. Because they could not bear what was being commanded. Hmm. That's the first day. That's the first point. That's the order of the Old Testament. And even that gospel, amen, had some dimension of glory. Even though the scripture says the glory was fading away, but it had a dimension of glory. Let's read on. He said, but even if an animal touches the mountain... It must be stone. The sight of that order, of that concept of, of engaging the things of God was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. But fear is good because fear tells us amen, that something is present. Fear is the, is the, you know, is, is, is the reality, is the manifestation of a reality of a presence. But what am I saying? If we're, if, we, if we're not afraid of God, amen. Of course, this is not a fear that you dread. This is a fear of reverence. If you don't have a sense of fear in you, then you don't have a sense of the presence of God. You see, you, 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 you're afraid of what you know is presence. You're afraid of something that you believe is there. So that's my point. Nobody gets to be afraid of what they are not aware of. Fear, amen, is a manifestation of an awareness. This time, this time around is the manifestation of the awareness of God. And what do we do? Because we are afraid, we are, we are afraid, we dread, hallelujah, you know, his, his awesomeness, yes. But beyond just dreading him, but we are also in awe, we are aware, hallelujah. Because of we are in awe and aware, amen, there's a reverence. Moses must have passed that same path in the wilderness several you know several times but this time around amen as he was leading his ship he had a voice Moses where you're standing is a holy ground something happened to him remove your shoe something happened in his life and we need that you know engagement when we talk about building an apostolic community, we want to be able to come into a place where the brethren gather, amen, and we begin to check our life because, amen, there's an awareness of the presence of God there. People must, amen, understand that when they come into our proximity, amen, 
that we are carrying the presence of God. It should be, it should be something in them. Something in them should tell them, hey, check yourself. You know, back in the days, when you are going to meet a prophet, you, you want to check your life. You want to check yourself because you know that he can see through you. You, you, you cannot just engage, amen, with frivolous attitude. You cannot just engage the way, you, you know, you are, no. You, 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 you go wash, you go, you know, they had to go wash before they engaged the mountain. That understanding is no longer in the church. And we keep saying, well, uh, well, what God is saying all right, is that uh, uh, this fear is not for dread, it's for reverence. Yes, but it's for both. It's for both. Because God is a consuming fire. If you take him for granted and you refuse to acknowledge who he is and what he is and what he's doing, you'll face the consequence. It's like, you know, the presence of fire and you're like, you don't care. You just go put your hand there. You will be burnt. There's a law. You will be burnt. There's a law of acknowledgement. We have to acknowledge who he is. Moses, amen, himself was trembling with fear. But we are coming, hallelujah, to a mountain called Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, to the city of the living God. He said, you have come to a thousand upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. The fact that they're in joyful assembly does not mean that that fear is no longer there. That, that presence is no longer there. It has to be there. Because we need that, amen, in the concept of representation. You see that in the book of Acts. They were afraid to join them because they know what the church, amen, stood for, stand for, and what the church carries. Today, anybody can just walk into our midst <clears throat> in the name of liberty and do what they feel they should do. They want to do. And we even make excuse for them. All kinds of ca characters, sin, ungodliness that we have tolerated. In the book of Ezekiel, the Lord said, come see what you know, these elders are doing in my house. They have driven me out of my house. Yes. We have, we, we, we have said, no, we don't want God again. We don't want this fear. We don't want this dread. We don't want to reverence him. We want to do, we want to, we want to relate to him on our own terms. We have become pali pali. No, God is not pali pali with us. He's our father. But every child knows that, amen, you must have a degree of fear for your father or else, amen, you lose his honor. Or he loses his honor in your life. And that, amen, I mean, spells into all kinds of things. The day, the moment, amen, uh, a child no longer honor the father, that, that is a big problem. Because it's not just about the father, amen, providing for the child. It's not just about the, uh, the father saying, no, well, since you refuse to honor me, I'm no longer going to provide for you. No, that itself, amen, triggers certain things that begins to work against the child. That's why we've got to teach our children honor. God said, where is my honor? In the book of Malachi, where is my honor? Can you present this kind of lame offering to your governors? Where is my honor? We are in a day where we no longer honor God. Because his fear is no longer in our midst. His presence is no longer in our midst. This is the issue today. The moment we are awakened, you see, the presence of God is not just about, amen, how we feel in the worship. The worship should draw us to the place where we dread him, where we reverence him, where we are in awe of him. You see, when you worship God, amen, your heart swells, you, your eyes of understanding is open to see him in glory. And that's what brings people, amen, to their knees. You hardly truly worship God, amen, without bowing your face to the ground. 
without throwing your face to the ground and, cry and, and asking God, amen, to forgive you. Because when God appears in your worship, you see who you are for yourself. You don't just see him, but you also see yourself, amen. And, and that understanding is what makes you to say, Lord, depart from me. I'm just not worthy. In the year King Uzziah died, Isaiah served the Lord. What did he cry? Woe is me. I'm undone. Suddenly he realized, I'm sitting with sinners, with unclean men. My hands have been unclean. Yet this man, amen. I mean, we talk about a messianic prophet. That's Isaiah. Only Isaiah gives you, amen, a full clear picture of who Christ is from the Old Testament order. I mean, Isaiah was a man who walked with God. But until King Uzziah died, certain things he could not see about himself, about the place and position of God in his life. I want to thank God this morning. What am I saying? That as we continue to engage, amen, the things of God, the Lord will continue to speak to our hearts and we will Amen. Continually adjust ourselves. We began to look into Act for you know 14 yesterday, and we seen something that happened at Inconum, a place where Paul and Barnabas also went as they continue, amen, in their crusade of advancing, of pro pro you know, promoting and propagating the gospel of the kingdom. You see. Their life has become, you know, a, 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 a true carrier, a true reflection of God's desire and intention for the transformation of society. See, they were not just going to establish, you know, a, a, a local assembly. They were going to preach Christ. They were reflecting, amen, the, the, the demand of God, the values of God, the standard of God, amen, for, for humanity, for creation, and as people respond, amen, yes, as people respond, they began to follow them. Of course, they couldn't follow them around. So they are established places where the people can meet and be trained and be built up and be empowered. It was out of, amen, the, 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 the harvest of the field that, amen, those churches were established. Let's read on. Let's go back to Acts chapter 14. At Icanion, Paul and Barnabas went as usual to the uh, Jewish synagogue, there they spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Greek believed. But the Jews who refused to believe stirred up those Gentiles, amen, stirred up other Gentiles and poisoned their minds against their brothers. So Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there. Why? Because they needed to do what? To establish this great harvest. Amen. Of the Jews and the Greek that has come to the Lord. There was, there was, there was a resistance. There was negativity. Amen. At economy. So they needed to spend time to establish. Amen. The, the, the new converts. So it's not enough just to win people to the Lord. Amen. We also need amen, to, to build a place, to establish a place. That's why, amen, our, our mandate, our work, amen, is built on three values, amen. Discipleship, amen, yes, leadership and governance. We have to disciple people. Where you disciple people, you establish them, amen, upon the foundation of truth. You establish their heart. Yes, people give their life to Jesus, but that doesn't mean that suddenly they are homeward bound. No, we have to establish them upon the pathway, upon the right path. Amen. That heaven has desired and ordained for them. And that is not just some, you know, a, a religious thing or denominational thing. No, we have to we have to help them to understand. Amen. The new life that they have come to in Christ Jesus. Yes. We have to help them to transit properly. Yes, when you give your life to Jesus, you're changed. But the transformation that should take place, because there are certain beliefs, values in your life, amen, that are still ingrained, amen. The concept, amen, of bringing the people to the knowledge of this new life cannot be overemphasized. The Bible says, so Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there speaking boldly 
for the Lord. Who confirm the message. Listen to this, friends. Who confirm the message of his grace by enabling them to perform to perform signs and wonder and wonders. So we begin to see, all right, that the Lord, amen, was indeed confirming the work of Paul and Barnabas through signs and wonders. You see, we're not the one, you know, we don't cough the, the shots for signs and wonder. Signs and wonder, the Bible says, we follow them. We follow them. Yes, these are grace and giftings that heaven, amen, deems fit at each point or wherever, amen, the Lord will, you know, have signs and wonder. There are ministry, yes, that are known for signs and wonders. And there are those that are not that, amen, uh, 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 into signs and wonder. It doesn't make them less a call, less a gift or ministry, amen. As like I always say, every field that we find ourselves, every region we find ourselves, wherever the Lord, amen, will lead us, amen, will demand or require the kind of grace or giftings or manifestation that the Lord himself, amen, will desire there. There are places that you go and the kind of things that will begin to happen, you like, whoa, God, have you noticed if you are somebody who is given to, amen, mission work? The kind of way you function on the mission field when you go out I mean, from your local church to go on mission field. You could be the head pastor. You could be one of those who maybe follow him. You understand? The kind of things that happens when you go out to the field amen, to, 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 to carry out the work of mission amen, is totally different in terms of the authority and the power and grace that you function in. I've, I've noticed that or I've noticed that not just in my own life but in the life of many people that there's a special kind of grace there's a release all right it's like there's a multiplication amen of the anointing when you go out i believe the anointing to 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 function in the field is completely different from the anointing amen that uh, uh that 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 allow us to carry out our ministry at you know at our local base you know talking about those who are into you know a uh, church planting church ministry local church and there's all kinds of reason to that you know when you uh when you live within that local you know a uh, church base for too long there's the concept of familiarity that's why i always encourage you know pastors leaders all right maybe every six months or once at least in a year you know move out go to the field Go test the grace and, and the power of God upon your life. Go test your giftings, amen, on a new ground. Go somewhere else. Go to another place. You will see that the, the kind of grace and ability that you will function in will be totally different from the grace, amen, or the, the, you know, the, 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 the anointing that you function with when you are in your local, local base. Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there speaking boldly for the Lord who confirmed the message. It's the Lord that confirms. Who confirmed the message. Amen. With signs and wonder. The people of the city were divided. <laughs> some amen, decided. Amen. Some decided with the Jews. Others with the apostles. They were divided of course. Like I said. Everywhere the, the, you know, the, the Paul and Barnabas went. Everywhere the gospel goes, there are certain demonic, satanic, religious systems that always track. They track us too. And they, their plan is to bring division. Their plan is to, you know, is to model the water. Their plan, amen, is to create commotion. Their plan is to create confusion. See, the Bible says the, the, the city was divided. Some sided with the Jews and others with the apostles. And you always have this, friends. I've seen this several times. Whenever I go to declare the word of God I, or I'm somewhere preaching or even on our platforms, there's always that division because you are bringing the truth and the truth that you're bringing is making demand on the lies. Amen. That have been promoted, that have been propagated. is making demand. He's awakening the people to realize, wait a minute, the things that we thought, amen, is true. In fact, it's not. There is no way you can avoid 
this concept of division. As long as you want to stand for truth, you want to preach the truth, you want to declare the gospel of the kingdom, you are going to be creating division because the things that you, you're declaring will be will be challenging the values, the wrong teachings, amen, the, the principles, amen, and the and, and the agenda, amen, of the religious leaders. That's why I said not everybody likes what I'm doing. And I'm not talking about unbelievers. I'm talking about so-called believers, Christians. They won't like it because, one, they see you as a threat. But you're not declaring anything outside the word of God. You are raising the bar. You are bringing, amen, the pure milk of the word. You are bringing, amen, the true fresh bread of God's word. You're serving, amen, the people, amen, a meat that is fresh. Not polluted, you know, food. Not compromised food. You're not serving them sour milk. Amen. Fresh. People are going to hate you for that. Jesus was crucified for standing for truth, for declaring the truth. There was division between, amen, the Jews and the apostles. They divided the city. Verse 5 says, there was a plot a foot among the Gentiles and the Jew. The Gentiles and the Jew came together. You see, that always happened. When there is an issue that challenges two wrongs, those two wrongs gang up together against the right. We've seen that in politics. We've seen that, amen, with religious people. You, you see the church agreeing with, you know, the world system, politicians, you see them agreeing together, amen, to fight the truth. There was a plot of, you know, a foot among the Gentiles and the Jews together with their leaders. To me, listen to this, to mistreat them and to stone them. They said, let's mistreat these people. Let's shame them. Let's dishonor them. Let's discredit them. To mistreat them and stone them. But they found out. Paul and Barnabas found out about it and fled to Lycanion. Lican they fled to Amen, Lycanion city of Lystra and Derby and to the surrounding country where they continue to preach the gospel. You just must have this understanding that while you're doing the work of God, you must also, Amen, you must have ears on ground. You know why? Because these people were preserving their life to go to other places, to, do, to reach out to, you know, other places. So, don't be too zealous to say, well, we're going to die here for the gospel. Oh, we just love God. We're going to die. No. If you die, then the things that God will have you do also die there. So, sometimes when you do what you need to do, amen, you must know how to escape, how to move to the next place. I love this. Let's read on. Verse 8. In Lystra, there sat a man. You see, the, the, the antagonism, the rejection, the, the, the evil that you know you face in one region does not prevent the power of God. Amen. And listen to this. They could have just decided to stand and defend themselves. All right, maybe and call down fire. No, they move on. We've got to know how to conserve, amen, the grace and the strength that God has given to us. We need wisdom to lead us, to guide us. We talked about that yesterday. Amen. We should not have the concept, the mindset, the religious mindset. Because people have that religious mindset. Well, we're just going to die for God here. No, 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 no. There are still places that need to be covered. There are places. I mean, I've, been, I've, been, I've, I've faced persecution in this community. Like I said, at some point, I had to withdraw myself, amen, from the mainstream, from the main life, amen. There was a point that, all right, I'm almost like everywhere, you know, yes. But when you realize that, wait a minute, these people are not ready for what you're talking about, you withdraw yourself, you change the strategy. You are not, you are not limiting, amen, the values of the gospel. You are not reducing the, the, the authority of the gospel, amen, but you're looking for a different platform. You're looking for, amen, a different way to continue to, I mean, where I am right now, I'm declaring to as many who know me, know, know, who knows what I do, amen, they will connect, amen, and that's why we use, you know, the social media. People, I mean, this, this word can get into every home. 
without you know having to fight anybody without having to you know go and you know challenge or confront anybody but the word of god will get to the people because amen god has a way of promoting amen the gospel of his kingdom if we will stand and present ourselves and offer ourselves to him amen he will use us to continually declare his will his counsel and his word and we need to see that amen we must preserve ourselves to be able to carry out if I hear tomorrow that somebody wants to come and kill me, I need to, you know, protect myself. I can't stand and say, well, I'm just going to defend myself. Yes, you want to defend yourself, but you've got to have a, you know, you know, a, a stronger ground. You've got to have a higher ground to do that. All right. It will be foolish for you amen, to face the gun in the name of, well, no, you would have prevented other people who, who need to hear what you're declaring. Who has what? I mean, there are things still locked up in my spirit. There are still places I believe that God, hallelujah, will have me go. I believe there are still words, amen, that the Lord will have me, amen, con you know, you know, give out. I believe there are places the Lord will still have me contribute to. I believe there are books. God still, so I can't just offer myself, you know, just to die cheaply. No, we need the wisdom of God to lead us. Because on, on the apostolic amen, mission field, we are going to face all kinds of attack, all kinds of people. There was a plot to, to, you know, to mistreat them and to stun them. Of course, stun them to death. That is bringing judgment on them. We saw that in Act 13. We're seeing it again in Act 14. Everywhere they went, there was persecution. Everywhere they went, there was resistance. Hallelujah. The Bible said in verse, um, let's, let's go back to verse four, verse 4 again. But the people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews, others with the apostle. There was a plot afoot a among the Gentiles and the Jews together with their leaders to mistreat them and to stone them. But they found out about it and fled to Lycanion, a city of Lystra and Derby, and with the surrounding countries where they continued to preach the gospel. In Lystra, they sat a man who was lame. He had been, he had been in that way, amen, from birth and had never walked. God is going to show the people again that, hey, you see, whenever God performs a miracle, is a way of gathering the harvest field. When you do that, then you need to train, you need to build the people. Miracle, signs and wonder, amen, yes, it's for sign. Is to gather the people. When you gather them, amen, you need sound, amen, a, a, apostolic teaching. You need the ministry of teachers. You need the ministry, amen, of men and women who can build, who can uh, train, who can empower the people, amen. Signs and wonder does not build and train the people. Signs and wonder gathers the people, yes. We need both signs and wonder and the ministry, amen, of sound doctrine, teachers, we need the ministry of men and women who can build, who can empower, amen, yes, the people, who can bring them, who can shift their mind, amen, from their old order of life to the new way, to the new pattern, to the new intentions, in fact, to the original intention of God for their life. We cannot build a church on signs and wonder, but we need signs and wonder to attract the people, yes. Just like tongue, the Bible says it's a sign. Yes, the Bible says in Lystra there was a, a man who who sat who was who was who, there was a there was a man amen in Lystra who was lame he had not he, he, you know he had not walked amen before in his life amen the Bible says uh, this man listened to Paul as he was speaking Paul looked straight directly to the man and saw that he had the faith to be healed. Not this. I like this concept. The man, amen, listened to Paul. And Paul saw that this man had the faith. You see, the Bible says, faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God, of course. I'm talking about these things that we can use on the field, amen. And we can apply this value, this principle, amen, of, of engaging people. Sometimes we need to be able to see if people are ready for, you know, a miracle. They're ready, amen, you know, for... Uh, uh, th th their heart is ready amen, to receive the gospel or they are ready even for a miracle the Bible says yes 
as Paul was preaching, this man listened to Paul, a man speaking, he listened to him. And there are people that can be there listening, but they are not listening. And there are those who listen with clear attention. I've, I've been in that situation where you, you, you just see, hey, this person is ready for this. And immediately, things happen. But we have to develop that sense of understanding, discernment, and being able to see. Of course, the Bible says, uh, uh, he, as he listened to Paul, as he was speaking, Paul looked directly at him and saw that he had the faith to be healed. Remember, the Bible says, this man, I've never, I've never walked before. He's been lame. All right? he, he has never walked before. So this takes some level of faith. I mean, the preaching of the word of God, it man produces faith. That's the point that I'm making here. The preaching of the word of God, the declaration of the word of God. You see, this we're not going to try to perform miracle. They went to preach the word of God. As they were preaching, amen, something happened. The word of God, amen, has the authority and the power to bring healing, to bring transformation, to empower, to restore. So many things can begin to happen, amen, when the word of God, amen, is being declared. Particularly when the word is being declared with the right heart. That's why, you see, whenever I'm preaching the word of God, I make sure that I don't have anything bothering me. You see, because when you have issues bothering you, amen, and you're declaring the word of God, that interferes with the word of God. And this is why, amen, our home front is important in terms of supporting what we do. If, you, if, you, if you're in an environment, you live in a home where you are being bothered, all right, where you are not being honored, where the grace of God, amen, is not, is not being recognized or honored in your life, that impacts what you do as a servant of God. When you have children that are wayward, that are all, that, you know, you don't know where they are and you, you know, and you want to continue the work of God, guess what? That will affect, that will touch, influence your degree of performance. Many a times, you know, our, our family member do not understand the degree of what we're doing. They don't even understand the level of war and battles that we face because they themselves, to a certain degree, amen, the enemy is making sure that they don't listen, they don't support. Even when they say they support, but their heart is not aligning, amen. There's no agreement. So that hinders, amen, the flow of the, of the life, of the power of God. Yes, you're declaring the word of God. It's just language. It's just semantics. But we're talking about, amen, a condition where, amen, everything is set. Mentally, spiritually, psychologically. That when you release the word of God, something begins to happen in the life of those who are listening. And that's kind of a family we believe God for. I'm saying this because I know this is what goes on in the life of many, you know, ministers. Because ministers have their own family, have their own homes. Yes. Many a times, we are not at rest in our home. The environment is not conducive. Yes. There's always battle, challenges, disagreement between husband and wife. And most times, the enemy, amen, instigate those things. When you don't have a supportive wife, amen, as a servant of God, it hinders, amen, your performance. It hinders no matter how, you know, you try to psych yourself up. It's easier for you to, you know, to preach and declare the counsel of God's word with, amen, somebody who supports you, with a family who encourages you encourages you amen who believe in what you're doing all right who easily minister to you it's easy for you to function and be effective than when you carry the whole load on yourself they don't have to be part of your ministry but they can amen support your ministry by giving you moral support by encouraging you all right by doing what needs to be done yes because these are all issues amen that we need to look at when we talk about the restoration of the apostolic church, remember the apostolic church is directly linked to our homes. All these men, amen, walking on the field, they had family. So let's not push that under the carpet. That's a, that's a real thing. When there is competition between husband and wife, amen, it, it hinders the flow of the anointing. You know, the anointing of God is very sensitive. The things of the spirit are very sensitive. If there's no clarity, if there's no understanding, if there's no maturity, particularly from the part, amen, 
of the spouse. Oh, it can hinder how you perform. It can frustrate, amen, how you perform. Your performance is not what people see. It is the result, amen, that you produce via the spirit. The Bible says, this man listened to Paul. As he was speaking, Paul looked directly at him and saw that he had faith to be healed and called out, stand up on your feet. At that time, the man jumped up and began to walk. <laughs> Amazing. Stand up on your feet. The resident faith, the resident power of God, amen, was unleashed to, to heal this man. And that's what happened. When we engage the word of God, there's a resident power. Whenever we engage the word of God, amen, in the spirit of truth, without distraction, that's why the enemy is very good to throw distraction, distraction at us. <laughs> when you engage the word of God with a heart that is truly open and aligned to the word of God, guess what? Things begin to happen. The Bible says, the man jumped up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the, in, in the Lycanian language, the gods have come down <laughs> in human forms. You know, these are places that were being infested by idolatry. The Greek gods are, are the one in charge of these regions. All these regions that Paul was going Paul and Barnabas were going, all right? We are all saturated, amen, with idol worship. We're going to see in, in chapter 17, when God, when Paul got to a particular place, he saw this city infested with all kinds of gods, all kinds of, you know, you know uh, uh, altars. To the point he saw a, a place where people were worshiping a God they don't know to a known God. <laughs> it was that bad that they're worshiping a God they don't know. Let's just worship any God, give it any name. It's like it sounds like the days we live in today. People are worshiping trees, worshiping water, worshiping people are marrying trees. I mean, people are worshiping the air, the, the mother earth, they're worshiping all kinds of things. They're just looking for something that they can connect to, but they don't want to connect to the true God. They want to connect to something that God creates, that the Father himself created, that the Lord Jehovah creates. You see, as long as they can manipulate that God, they can control that God. It's a God that you can control, a God that you can manipulate, a God that you can carry, a God that you can click on, a God that you can, you know, you, you, you can determine, all right? Uh, 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 his movement, a God that you can position and reposition. That's the kind of God the world wants. A God that will sink to their own desire, that will tell them, you know, uh, uh, what they want. The world is crazy. The world has lost it. What, uh, a God that will only sanction what they want. You have nations who have gods like you have you know trees the bible says they shouted in the Lycanian language the gods have come down in human form Barnabas they called Sus Paul they called Hermes because he was the chief speaker you know those are the like the two most powerful Greek gods. Zeus is one of the most powerful, I mean, if not the most powerful gods of the, of the Grecian mythology. And Paul, they call him an Hermes because he's the chief speaker, he's the one speaking. This God, this God, this God has got a voice. The priest of, listen to this, the priest of Zeus, amen, whose temple was just outside the city, when he heard this, ran, brought a bull, amen, and wrought 
brought the bull and rushed to the city, amen, uh, to the city gate and did what? And sacrificed the bull. Offered the bull in sacrifice to them. But when Paul and Barnabas, um, and when, 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 when the apostle, you know, Barnabas and Paul heard of this, they were not even aware that this is what is going on. When the people saw what is going on, they said, my word, the gods have come down. What are we supposed to do? Let's offer sacrifice. I can bet you if this thing were happening in our day, in fact, yes, to a certain degree they are. But what I'm saying is, if certain men of God start performing like this and people start reacting in this form, they will tell them they should leave them. That is a revelation. That's how bad. When Paul and ba when Paul when the when the apostle Barnabas and, and Paul heard of this, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, "Friends, why are you doing this? We too are amen. We too are only humans, like you." We are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from those worthless things. Look at what he called their idols. From those worthless things to the living God. I told you, every opportunity we have, amen, should be seen as a key to declare the gospel of the kingdom. If we don't have it, if we are not, if we are not determined to preach the gospel of the kingdom, what is the gospel of the kingdom? We decrease. God increases. Any gospel we preach, amen, in regards to God, that puffs us up, that increases us, that, amen, all the people I've seen is us. We become larger than God. We become, you know, more amplified. Our voice, our environment, everything that people have seen is all about us. Listen to this. That immediately tells us that we have become the gods of the Greeks. And there were people will pour libation. People, people will pour offering. On our behalf, and they're doing it. You can see that many, many of the churches. When we go to churches, <laughs> the, the the people worship, amen. The preachers, more than they worship God, the Christ. The altar, the pulpits, you know, the 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 the, the, the pastor's wife, and and all the entourage, amen, speaks about how powerful and how awesome the man of God is. When you look at certain people's altar as big, I mean, the altar alone is, you know, is enough to start a church, to, to, you know, to put people. See, it's not just about what we preach, it's about what we do. Because what we do tells people to respond to us in certain ways. There are people who have false humility. False humility. When you see them, you think, oh, these are very humble people. No, just look at their environment. Don't look at how they talk. Look at their environment. Their environment speaks louder than their voice. The things around them, the people around them, the lifestyle speaks louder than, amen, their hallelujah, amen. Don't be fooled by their, you know, by their soft-spoken voice. Don't be fooled, you know. Paul and Barnabas tore their, their clothes. It's, an, it's a way of saying this is an abomination. We are ordinary people like you. Friends, why are you doing this? We too are only humans like you. We are no gods. Huh? In a day where the theology, ye are gods, have been promoted in the body of Christ. Come on. I say in a day where the theology. Have been promoted that you are gods. I've heard it and I've challenged some men of God. Who are preaching it here in South Africa. We are gods. God have made us gods. After all we are born of God. And therefore we are gods. If we are born of God and God is God. What do you think sons of God ought to be? Gods. I say somebody lied to you. Somebody deceived you. You're eating from the tree. From the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God did not create us to be gods. He creates us, amen, as sons to represent him. 
He gave us power. He gave us authority. He gave us dominion. Gods are not created. We are created. Nobody created God. But God created us. We are created by him. And he didn't create us to be gods. When he said, I've made you a god unto Pharaoh, that is a different thing. And we must understand scripture in context. When God said, I've created you amen, as a god unto Pharaoh, means there is nothing Pharaoh will be able to do to stop you. But that doesn't make you a god. If you're a god, it means, amen, that you sit equal with God. Are we equal? My son is not equal with me. My son has everything that I have. But it's not me. It's not me. It will never be me. God created us differently. We all have amen, our own unique DNA. Our own unique spiritual DNA. And if God created amen, man to be God, then Adam should not have fall. Huh? Simple. Jesus would not have had his own will and yield that will to the Father. He willingly yield himself. If he came to earth, amen, as God, he, would have, he should have just done everything, amen, in the position and the authority of God. But he came to show us, amen, how to live as humans. We are powerful people. We have will. We have choices. We have the power to decide. <laughs> imagine if God created man to be God. Just imagine the condition of the earth today. We'll have destroyed everything. We are not even God yet. Yet look at the condition of the earth. You see. All these extra biblical doctrines and teachings that have been brought into the church. We need to engage them headlong. We need to challenge them headlong. Because they are the things making the work of God more difficult for us. There are some people that have false sense of who they are. And that's why certain people believe because of their position and authority. They want to have five jets. No matter what you have. Listen, the devil was willing to give the entire glory of the earth just for Jesus to bow to him. So for you to hold on to possessing things and taking things and building things to define your state and status, it means that you're not reading scripture or you don't understand what the scripture is saying. The devil will give you whatever he wants to give you as long as you pay homage to him, as long as you worship him. May the Lord help us as the church, as the body of Christ. May we continue to diminish in this ministry. May everything that we do here continue to diminish. May Christ be exalted. May Christ be glorified. May his kingdom be magnified. May men not see Isaiah, but see what God can do through Isaiah. My purpose is not to magnify myself. It's not to magnify amen, my giftings. My purpose is to hide behind the cross and let Christ be magnified. And let Christ be exalted. And let Christ and his kingdom be seen and be felt. My, my calling and my passion is to continually pray that the kingdom of God become visible within the space of man. Is that my life be saturated with such a light that men will not see me but will see Christ. We bring you good news telling you to turn from these worthless things to the living God who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in it because those are the things that these people are paying homage to. There are gods who made the heavens. There are gods who made the sea. There are gods who made the land. There are gods who provide food for us. There are gods of stones, gods of water. There are gods of love, gods of you know a, a, a fertility. There are all kinds of things that they built a god to us. Don't you know that these are all things instigated by the powers of darkness, by demonic agents positioned in the earth, amen, by the forces of darkness to promote lie within the hearts of men.
in the past God let all the nations to go their own ways to do their own things this is the declaration of of Paul and Barnabas in the past God allow you to do everything you want to do you build all kinds of things and you call it what whatever name you call it you accord authority and power to all kinds of things God is God watch God was looking at you in the past Paul said God let all nations go their own way yet he has not left himself without a testimony. While he allowed you to do those things, yet he did not leave him, himself without a testimony. Why? Because the Bible says even creation is testifying about the, about the authority and the creator of God, the Almighty. Who is the Lord God Almighty, Jehovah? He himself has shown kindness by giving us rain, not, the, not you know, a, 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 a bow. He himself has given us rain. Amen. Not Suze. Amen. Not Emmys. He himself has given us rain from heaven and crops in their season. Paul was challenging their belief. Like I said, there are gods they've accustomed, accost, you know, accosted to seed, rain, harvest, all of that. They believe. You see, be careful of what you believe. Because what you believe can become your reality. What you believe can become your reality. And the devil knows how to, you know, how to find that reality. We live in a day where even the realities of men are being altered. In a day, amen, of, of artificial intelligence. In a day of, you know, uh, uh, AI and all of this. Hey, God help us. People have been deceived. Your, your imagination can be so wind up to, to become your reality. Your false state of mind, false state of belief. Today, things that are not real have been promoted to be real. And they're giving them emotion. They're giving them feelings. Yes, you see, like I said some time ago, your brain does not know between reality amen, and, and, and fiction. If, if somebody creates something that can move your emotion, the brain will interpret it as real. This is why we need to know the truth. This is why we need to stand and stay with the truth. So we are not altered. In the day where people want to have, you know, you know, they want to make love with machines. They're trying to give machines emotion. We live in evil days. The things that man have created with their hands, they're turning it to become a god. Yes. The day of the Tower of Babel is becoming a reality. See, Bab Babel, amen, is rebellion. That rebellion today, amen, has grown ten times stronger. Man, man is involved in all kinds of ideas. Coming up with all kinds of inventions. To replace the true image of man and of God. It's a dangerous day we live in. The Bible says in the last day, yes, many will depart from the faith. Why? Because, I mean, I watched something, uh, a documentary I think was done by BBC. They said during the lockdown, all right, because people could not go to their temple, to go to their, uh, uh, you know, various place of worship so somebody i don't know where you know created a robot and give that robot some you know a, a good intelligence and the robot can can hear your prayer and can respond can respond to you back robots are becoming you know human gods you see how man has continued to fall Christ came to lift us up out of our fallen state to bring us back to that place of authority. But the fallen man says, no, I don't want that. They worship the, 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 you know, the, the creation of their own hand. We can stay on this point for a long time. We need to look into this. What is it that you're worshiping? When you watch you know, programs, movies, 
How real are those things to you? When you listen to certain people, you know, talk, you know, speak on certain subject, how convincing is their lecture? Is their belief to you? See, the word of God is, is the foundation that helps us to test if something is real or unreal. If something is true or lie. The word of God is what helps us to identify. Amen. If something is truly fake or real. But if you don't have the word of God in you, you'll be deceived. Because the world we live in today and the way the world is going. Amen. The, the, the world of, of, of meter and on and an unending amen, a, a, a universe, the continuous circle of things, man is buying into that religion. Man is buying into, yes, we are gods. We can do and undo. We have the power. We can, you know, elongate our life. No, nobody has such a power. Even if they run to mass and try to create a colony for themselves, create another civilization, they will still be judged in mass. God rules over the universe. He's the creator of the universe. As the truth. And this gospel, we have to understand. We have to understand what the gospel is and means as believers. So when we stand for the gospel, when we stand for the truth, amen, we know we're standing on a good ground, not on a shaky ground. What do you believe? What do you believe? And how persuaded are you about what you believe? Lest men begin to worship you because certain things you're able to do. See, certain men, very powerful, wealthy, rich, they position themselves as becoming invincible. But God is judging them. And God will continue to judge them. You see. In the past. God. Amen. Let all nations go their way. Yet he has not left himself without a testimony. This is the gospel we need to bring. Amen. To this generation. That God has not left himself. He will never leave himself without a testimony. Me and you. Amen. A reflection of the testimony of God. What is the testimony of, of God? The Bible says, amen, the, 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 the spirit of Christ is testifying, the spirit of truth, the spirit of prophecy, amen, is testifying, amen, of Christ. We have to declare, we have to proclaim what the Lord, amen, has done to us. Our life ought to be a mirror of the testimony of the goodness of God, of the grace of God, amen. That we were once seen as deep in darkness. This is what the Lord has done in our life and through our life. But beyond that, we have to also allow amen, creation to testify of the goodness of God. That requires that we are awakened in the spirit of our intelligence. Hallelujah. Yet he has not left himself without a testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in their season. He provides, he provides you with plenty of food and fill your heart with joy. Because this is what they've told them. If you worship this God, they will, it, will, they will, it will give you rain. If you worship this God, you will be fertile. Your, 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 your wives will have children. Amen. You will have sons. If you worship this God, yes. You will win in your battle. You will conquer if you worship this God. This will happen to you. That will happen to you. But if you don't, you will die. Paul is saying, hey, they lied to you. This heavenly God that we talk about, this our Father who created everything, amen, is the one who provides for you. He's the one who gives you food and fill your heart with joy. The fact that you can have joy, the fact that you can, you know, you can express Happiness. He, he gives it to you. Verse 18. Even with these words. They had it difficult. Keeping the crowd from sacrificing to them. <laughs> then some Jew came. Amen. From Antioch. And Iconium. 
and won the crowd over. Jesus. Then some Jews came from what? From Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. The crowd, you know, the crowds were just crazy. They were just, what? They keep screaming and shouting that these guys, so the these guys from 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 you know from Antioch, these Jewish guys, these terrible guys from Antioch and Iconium came and won the crowd over. He said, Paul, if you don't want the crowd, we'll take them. Now, Paul and Barnabas kept saying, Guys, we are no gods. The Bible says. They stoned Paul and dragged him outside, outside the city, thinking he was dead. You see, these people, religious spirit. Can you see this Python spirit? This amen, a, a, a Jezebelic, demonic religious spirit. In the midst of bringing good tidings. And these men continue to diminish. Say, no, we are no gods. We, no, we are just ordinary people. The Bible says... Some Jew came from Antioch and Iconium and stoned Paul, dragged him out of the city. You talk about people talking about standing on their right to destroy Christianity in the 21st century. Friends, they are determined to do it. It's that same spirit that we saw back then, 2,000 years ago plus, is the same spirit that is alive today in our cities. They will stone you. You think that you're doing amen, the, the world a favor by preaching to them, by preaching good news to them. There are people who hate you for that. And they will do everything. They will malign you. They will do everything they can do to stop you. Bible says they stone Paul and drag him out, thinking that he was dead. But after the disciples had gathered around him, he got up <coughs> and went back into the city. This man would not just take no. Something happened in his life. And I pray that what happened in the Paul, in, in the heart of Paul, will happen in my own life and in the life of many of us. Because, friends, we need that boldness. We need that. Fear is what the enemy used to cripple us from going for God. Who wants to go to China? When you know what you know, the Chinese government are doing to their own people and anybody who brings the gospel to them. Or any other place, not just China. It's happening today, like I said, in Australia and Canada. In many places, who wants to go to the, you know, to, to, to the east, to the far east? Who wants to go to the Arab world and proclaim and declare? No, because you know what they're going to do to you. But if the Lord sends us, he graces us. But after the disciples had gathered around him, he got up and went back into the city. The next day, he and Barnabas left for Debbie. We're going to stop here. It's my prayer that this truth will awaken your heart. Just reading the scripture has done something to me. Looking at the attitude, the, the character of this true gem of apostolic regions, Paul and Barnabas. See how determined they are. This is the same Paul who was once a man. A committed Jew. Committed to the religion of his forefathers, like he said. When the Lord touches you, he touches you. No pain. No famine. No death. No peril. No sword. No opposition. Can stop a man who has been touched by God. Not touched by religion. At this point, religion will tell you give up. Traditions of men will say give up. If all you know is just church, come on, just give up. But not Paul, not Barnabas. May God give us such people in our day. May we have such men that will never give in to the lies of the enemy. Will never allow their temporal pressure and pain and need and lack. Somebody was asking me, you know, a few days ago, how do you survive financially? How do you make it? How? How? Well, it's not how. 
I wait on God. I wait on him to provide. It's not easy. But for the gospel's sake, we endure all things. Full-time ministry. And I was saying to this person, I said, well, <laughs> the truth is, you are the only one, after a long while, when God touch your light, touch you know, your, your heart through what we're declaring, that at least you support me monthly. You're the only one. Yes, some do give the support when they feel like supporting. When they feel, you know, stared to, to give, they give. And I, I, I do appreciate it. We talk about somebody committed to give to you every month. You are the only one. And I appreciate that. But I will never go out there and complain. And I will never take advantage. Or say, because I don't have. But we are giving so much. Therefore, no, no. Because she was comparing, you know, me to a place she went. And this man of God was complaining, you know, that the church was not assisting. And this man of God was crying, you know, on the pulpit. That is basically, you know, trying to wind the people. I would never do such a thing. Of course, our level of maturity in the things of God differs. I've got my need, deep needs. But guess what? The Lord is my provider. Because he's my father. When he gives, I'm grateful. When he's yet to answer amen, my prayer on a need, I'm also grateful. Because at the end of the day, it is his peace and joy in my life that matters. And what can you buy with that? How much can you buy peace? The peace of God, the joy of God. How much can you buy, amen, the air that he's given to you, the strength to declare? There are people who are on their way to work this morning, walking, doing everything they can do, earning big salary, but they are not happy. They are the most sorrowful people. I'm doing what I'm doing with joy. Yes, there was a period in my life that I was doing this with, with such a pain in my heart. Not because I don't love the things that God has called me to do, but because of the environment I found myself. When the environment is not conducive for you to preach and declare the counsel of God, the enemy can bring frustration to your life. But I thank God that God will continue to heal our environment. God will continue to give us rest and peace because we need peace to drive the things of the kingdom. And to me, that is the highest commodity. That is the highest, amen, commodity in the economy of the kingdom. That we have peace, that we have rest, that we have joy, that we have a sense of right standing with God. I am content. I am very content. Yes, I do have needs. And I believe God to increase. Amen. Yes. His grace of, 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 of finance in my life. I believe God that he will do that. But where I am, I am very content. And we should be content. Because if we're not content with what God has given to us, there is no way we can advance the things of God. The enemy will frustrate you. You can have a lot of money. But if you don't have peace, if you don't have joy in your life, the enemy will frustrate you. Because he's very good at that. He's the master of frustration. So as we round up this morning, we give all glory, praise, and honor to our Father. Because he is faithful to his word. I am a saint one. I will remain a saint one. His counsel and purpose in my life will abide. Heaven and earth will pass away. But my heart will abide and remain faithful to his word, faithful to his will. Every part of me daily I dedicate to the advancement of his purpose and counsel. This is why I live. I live for his glory. I live for his kingdom. I live for the advancement of his will. So, let it be known that Christ is what we live for. His kingdom, his glory is what we declare. That is the gospel. The gospel is not just what we preach. It's an entire life that we live. The gospel is an entire life 
that we leave. Your home, your family, your children, your wife, everyone, the breath you breathe, the food you eat, the environment you live are all part of the expression of the gospel. Look at what these people went through. We read it and we just read it. No, it must speak to our heart. It must awaken us to adjust to truth. Yes. In this world, he said, you face tribulation. He said, but rejoice for I have overcome the world. Let that truth, amen, imprint a sense of newness in your heart. Hallelujah. The stone Paul dragged him out of the city thinking he was dead. But the disciples had gathered around him. He got up and went back into the city. The next day, him and Barnabas left for Debbie. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for truth and grace. Thank you, Father, for courage, boldness, confidence to stand, to continue to proclaim and declare your counsel. We love you, Lord. Thank you so much, everyone, friends, for joining once again this morning. You can feel, you can pick how burdened my heart is. May the church be awakened. May we rise up. May we not look at ourselves as if, you know, we are this so-called some important shot. We are only important if we continue to advance the kingdom of God. The field truly is a need. The harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. Let, 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 the, let the Lord lead you. Let the Lord continue to guide you. Let the Lord open our eyes to see the state and the condition of the, of the harvest field. God bless you, everyone. I appreciate you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Please continue to pray for me. I need your prayer. God bless you. Bye-bye.